Hi, I'm Zach with Lambs Auto Customs and Repair. Today we're going to talk about ignition timing. What is ignition timing? How do you adjust your ignition timing and where does it need to be set at? Okay. Today I'm going to walk you through it on a small block Chevy. It's a very easy process to go through. It's very simple to understand and explain. Okay. Ignition timing is simply the time that the spark plug fires as the piston is coming up on the compression stroke that you want that spark plug to fire to ignite your air fuel mixture to shove that piston back down the cylinder and get you the horsepower that you're looking for okay ignition timing can be a very critical component of creating horsepower because if it's not done at the right time it's done too early or too late you're going to be creating yourself a problem either internal engine damage or losing horsepower because your air fuel mixture isn't going to burn at the correct time for what that engine is calling for okay there's three parts to ignition timing one you have your idle timing you have timing curve and then you also have your total timing your idle timing is the degrees that you have your ignition set at to fire while that engine is at an idle speed Typically, on a more stock, small block Chevy, smaller block bore motors, you're going to usually have it somewhere between 8 to 12 degrees before top dead center. Top dead center is the farthest point that piston travels before it stops briefly and heads back down the cylinder. Okay, now your timing curve is the amount of time this, if you look closely at this distributor, you'll see you have these springs and these arms. These arms will come out so we can get them to open up for us here. You see how it'll kind of open up. Okay, This right here is what actually adjusts the timing curve. The time it takes as the motor turns faster these springs, you can get them in either tighter springs or looser springs just depending on what you want your timing curve to be to open up either faster or slower. For a more stock engine, you're going to be having them open up slower because you're typically not going to be running the RPMs up very fast. Okay. Now, if you're running a more radical motor, you've got a bigger cam, you've got more horsepower, more compression, you're going to pull more RPMs a lot faster. You're obviously going to want some looser springs because you're going to flip open faster to adjust that timing range, which brings us into total timing. Now you're thinking, what is total timing? How can there be three different kinds? Your total timing, when you have your engine revved up at a higher RPM, okay, your piston is traveling not at an idle speed, but it's traveling at a faster speed in that cylinder. Okay, As it's traveling faster, that ignition timing has to be set earlier. So that way, it gives that air fuel mixture time to burn and shoves that piston down the cylinder again on the power stroke at the same time that it would at an idle speed okay and that's what those levers do for you is as the motor cranks at higher rpm it allows that timing to adjust and pushes it even more advanced usually when you're between three to four thousand rpm you're going to be looking at somewhere between thirty to thirty five degrees before top dead center so instead of firing at like an idle speed here and then going up and down it's more coming up and start to fire right in here come up and go down because that air fuel mixture has to have more time to burn okay so we've give you kind of a brief description of what exactly ignition timing is and and what it can do to create horsepower and, and where it needs to be adjusted so at this point we're going to go ahead and move on over to the engine we'll go ahead and explain a couple things that we're going to need to do and then we can go into to actually doing the process. Okay, here we have my uh, small block Chevy 350. I freshened up just before winter. I done away with the cast iron uh, intake and the quadrajet carburetor. I went with the aluminum torque or two uh, aluminum intake with a one inch spacer and a 625 CFM that'll brought performer series carburetor. Um, went with some eight millimeter plug wires just to help carry the power a little better the spark plugs um, there's two common terms you're going to hear when you're adjusting your timing one is advancing the timing and the other is retarding the timing that is your distributor that is where you adjust your ignition timing and when you say you're wanting to advance it you want to turn the distributor counterclockwise to the left that would make the spark fire before the piston gets to top dead center 
on the compression stroke. The more you turn to the left, the more you advance it, the sooner that spark plug is going to fire on the compression stroke. If you retard the timing, you're turning the distributor to the right clockwise. That's retarding it. It's making it fire either closer to top dead center or after top dead center, depending on what kind of fuel range you're running and things like that. Down here on your timing tab, zoom in on it here. This is your timing tab. It is on your timing chain cover. If you look, you can see there's a red pointer. Okay. If you look in the uh, hole in the pointer, you'll see where it says zero. On that peak where the point is, on the end of the red pointer, it is set at zero. Okay, that's a base timing. Now, this particular timing tab, you can adjust it to put that point on whichever pink or whichever uh, cutout you want your timing set on. I'm not going to worry about adjusting mine. I'm just going to time it on the peak where I want it. If you look to the left of that pointer, you'll see 4, 8, 12, and then 14 is right below it. It's going to be hard to see. That is degrees before top dead center. That is when your timing is advanced that far in advance. If you look to the right, you'll see 4 and you'll see 8. That is your timing retarded to either 4 or 8 degrees after top dead center. So after the piston is started on its way down on the power stroke. Okay. Now what you want to do when you're setting your timing is you want to pull your vacuum advance line off. I have mine set right here. You want to pull these off and cap them off. Okay. You pull those off so you're not pulling vacuum on the uh, vacuum advance on the distributor so you're getting a more accurate idle and base timing set. Okay. Now what we'll do since we kind of understand exactly what we're doing, what we're turning, in order to turn the distributor, there is a distributor clamp bolt right back here. You can see it right there. You see the base of the distributor there to the right, and then right underneath the yellow plug wire, you'll see that bolt head. That is the distributor clamp bolt. You'll need to loosen that just a little bit, just enough to get the distributor to turn around, whichever way you're wanting to take it, either advance or retarding the timing. Once you have the distributor set where you want it for your ignition timing, you'll want to tighten that bolt back down so your timing doesn't move. Okay? That's pretty much it as far as just a quick explanation. So what we'll do at this point, we'll go ahead and show you how to adjust that timing with the vehicle runner. Okay, so right now what we're going to do, we're going to set the timing. It's running at about 4 degrees before top dead center. Okay? I'll show you what that looks like on the timing tab, on the timing chain cover, and then I'll show you how to advance that timing where you want it. There's your timing tab. Right now you can see we're running right out about three to four degrees before top dead center. We want to change that so we'll run to about 12 degrees before top dead center. Now to do that we need to turn the the distributor to the right, counterclockwise. To the left, counterclockwise.
Okay, so now we got the timing set on 12 degrees before top dead center. I know the truck is pretty loud. It's got a set of open headers on it. It can be pretty difficult to hear what I'm saying. So I'll just kind of reiterate. We were sitting at 4 degrees before top dead center. When that piston would fire, now we're sitting at 12. I advanced it about 8 degrees by turning the distributor counterclockwise to the left. That sparked the spark plug more before it reached top dead center on the compression stroke. Now what you want to do is just kind of double check, make sure that you have your timing set right where you want it. You go ahead and unplug your vacuum advance lines. Just pull this off the carb. Okay. Get that dude plugged back on. Make sure it's got a good seal. Okay. Now we'll kind of we'll step back in here. We'll see what it does when we fire it up. Just kind of give us a ground so we understand what we're working with. Make sure it fires up easy. It should fire right up pretty quick. That fired up really easy. Now what we're going to do is you're going to use this tool. It's a distributor wrench. It's shaped in the shape of an L and it's meant to get around underneath the distributor and around the vacuum advance right back here to tighten down that nut that I showed you earlier right there. The distributor clamp bolt will tighten that up. Now once you have that tightened down and you're satisfied where it's at, you've adjusted and you set your timing you're pretty much done. The truck idles fine where I like it for the time being. I may go in and make some adjustments later. And if you do want to make an adjustment to your idle speed, you can do it right here. You get the there we go. That is your idle screw that you can set on the throttle linkages. And to let it idle slower, you just turn it out. To let it idle faster, to give it more gas, to idle a little quicker, you just turn that screw in. Okay. This one in this case is a hex head or an Allen head. In some other cases, you either have a Phillips or a straight head. So just get whatever you need to make that adjustment. I'm pretty satisfied where mine's at for the time being. Um, but that's where you would go to adjust that if needed. For all you people out there that haven't watched my channel until now, I appreciate you tuning in. For those of you that have come back and watched other videos before, I appreciate you coming back. And to anyone that has not done so yet, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Alright, and that's how you adjust your ignition timing on a small block Chevy. It's pretty much parallel with the big three, Chrysler, General Motors, and Ford. Thank you very much for watching my videos. It's always a pleasure to help you guys out. Anybody that's watching that has questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to go ahead and put them in the comment box. That's what it's there for. If I'm working on something, we might as well go ahead and take a video of it so we can pass it along and help somebody else out because odds are there's somebody that has a question out there and they just need to see it and know how it's done. And I'm hoping this really helps some people out there understand exactly what ignition timing is what it does for you. So like I said, if anybody out there has any questions, comments, or concerns, suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comment box. We'll try to get a video for you or answer your questions. Don't hesitate to do that. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do it because we're always going to be coming out with more videos. Thank you very much. I hope to subscribe and we'll see you soon with other videos.